Howdy everyone! Thanks for tuning in to this video. This is a video product review of the Surefire E2L Outdoorsman flashlight that you see in front of you here. So let's get started here. Um, Surefire markets this product as a small compact carry um, LED flashlight for um, just general purpose kind of use. It's not the brightest Surefire um, it's not the most expensive Surefire, and it's definitely not the most uh, quote-unquote tactical uh, designed product. Um, it's mainly a handheld flashlight for general purpose kind of use. Um, I guess if you could weapon mount this, if you, weapon mount this if you wanted to, but there are better lights for that in the Surefire product lineup. So it's um, in traditional Surefire fashion. It's got a Type 3 um, anodized finish on it, a nice uh, olive color. It's got a very aggressive neural grip surface throughout the body of the light, which makes it very easy to hold on to. And believe it or not, that's one of the things I look for in a small flashlight. You must have a really a pretty aggressive neural, simply because small flashlights are hard to grab onto. Like when it's cold out night, your hands are kind of numb, or maybe your hands are dirty a little bit. And believe it or not, I find a good neural surface, a very critical element, really, that, that makes or breaks the use of a flashlight. Something as simple as that. The ability to hold on to a flashlight and keep it in your hand um, really is a critical element, especially if you're doing like like cer cig like cigar hold grips and things like that. You want a good knurled, a, girl, a good grip surface on the light. So it's got a nice um, spring steel shirt clip, which I use quite frequently. Uh, either on my belt or in a holster or in my back as in my backpack as a pack carry. Um, let's see. It's got a a uh, Surefire TIR optic lens on the front, and what TIR stands for is it stands for Total Internal Reflection Optic Lens, and a little bit different mechanics, optical mechanics than uh, a traditional reflector. So it uses a refract the refractive properties of the clear glass in there to refract light and collect the side emitted lumens from the LED and direct them out the front. So it's got a, um, a UCL, uh, I, I should say ultra clear lens, a coated lens on the front and you can kind of see the rainbow color reflecting off that front lens there and that's what that coating, that rainbow color is a uh, anti uh, reflective coating and it increases the transmission efficiency of light through this front window here. Not all flashlights have that so um, it's kind of a nice thing to have. Uh, let's see. Um, what else can I say about this light here? Um, that's pretty much it. It's pretty straightforward. It's it's basically the the the, the mini mag light of the Surefire lineup. I I think um, it's about the same size and it's very similar in form and um, it's overall size. So uh, let's take a look at the batteries because battery options are very plentiful uh, with this light. So. Okay, so, by the book, Surefire only recommends and only warrants, warranties, I should say, the use of primary CR123 cells. Okay, and these are the standard Surefires that came with the light. They're great, great cells, awesome cells. If you just want a, a brainless way, worry-free way to power your Surefire flashlight, these are the cells to get. They're actually rebranded uh, USA-made Panasonics, I believe. So each of these are three volts, lithium batteries, and they're pretty straightforward, really nothing special about it. Um, option two, which Surfar does not technically recommend, but I happen to know that I've used this light routinely with, with uh, RCR123, rechargeable CR123 cells. Now, Surefire, of course, doesn't recommend it, and they will not warranty a light that's been damaged by these cells. But I've used these cells in this flashlight for several, for a couple of months at least. Other Candle Power Forum members have been using this light for years with RCR123 cells and have suffered no ill effects. So these particular uh, RCR123s are the cheap ones you get at Deal Extreme. I personally would recommend uh, AW um, IMR. RCR123 cells. I know those are great cells um, and I totally recommend them, but you can use these in a pinch. Um, the third option I want to uh, the third option I want to show you. The other thing I do is I use 17670 cells. And this is a good example of one. This happens to be a Panasonic, but um, this is an unprotected cell. I do not know if this flashlight will work with a protected cell. So this is a unprotected Panasonic 17670. 
and it works. It also works in this flashlight. I don't believe it's as bright as these other two cells over here, but it does work, and in a pinch, it does. It can be used to extend run times because the energy, power density, and capacity of uh, a 17670 is a lot more than an RCR 123 cell. Okay, um, I'm going to show you the inside of the flashlight now. So let's get down to the nitty gritty. And like all Surefires, this one has top notch machining quality, top notch O ring engagement. As you tighten down the cap, you can really feel the solid O and tight, watertight. I should say water splash tight fit of the o-ring gasket onto the switch mechanics so here's the spring and one thing that is kind of strange about the Surefire E-Series for those of you who are new to it is you can't install the cells here okay they, I think they do that on purpose it's a safety thing um, and they actually have a machined shoulder in there that prevents this cell from slamming into the switch mechanics, like if you were to drop your flashlight and come bam crashing down, you wouldn't have the weight of the cells slamming into the delicate switch mechanics here. So I think that's why Surefire does that, but I'm not, I'm not actually positive, so take that with a grain of salt. But the switch cap is replaceable. Surefire sells them separately. You can find these used on the Camel Power Forum marketplace. Uh, a lot of people selling them or they have extras or whatever, they don't need them anymore. So kind of a nice thing to know that you're never short of supply when it comes to replacement parts. So, uh, let's see. So, in order to replace the cells, oh, let's take, take a look at the threads up by the bezel end. Again, top-notch machining quality throughout. Again, O-ring water splash uh, seal for everything. So, to place the batteries in, you simply drop them in through the top. Oh, here's, let's, let's do this. Here's what the inside of the tube looks like. Pretty nice fit and finish overall. It's a fairly recent uh, build. Um, you can tell that because the inside of the bore of the flashlight is the newer silver uh, coating that Surefire uses for all its aluminum now. It's more environmentally friendly um, as opposed to some of the older. The older models have a gold color finish inside the, inside the body tubes. Okay, so there you have it. There's the CR123s that I'm using. and. In order to operate the light, it has a forward click switch. And so what that means is you simply press the light, press the button to activate the light. There's low, there's high, and you click the button to permanently engage the light. Low, high, and click the button. Or start it off on low and just use that. I think that's about 10 lumens right there. And the high output on this light is 110 lumens. So it's conservatively, conservatively rated by Surefire. Surefire only specs about 60 lumens uh, for this light. But a Kennel Power, Forum, Kennel Power Forum member, Big Chellis, tested this light in his integration sphere. And we tested it at about 110 lumens out the front. So very underrated light. So there you have it. Um, let's go outside and take some beam shots and do an outdoor review now pair of cells. So there's the Surefire 6P incandescent and there is the Surefire E2L. That little tree that you see over there is about 33 feet away and there's the Surefire 6P incandescent. And there's the E2L. This is the high mode that you're looking at. This is the 110 lumen high mode. And let's shine it down the pathway a little bit farther down. You see a garbage can, the fence down there. There's the E2L. And there's the 6P. So one of the nice things about the E2L is you can just take a Avion water bottle cap, like you see here, and place it right over the front and you've got a cheap light diffuser and what that means is if you find the light too spot throwy or too much of a tight spot beam you can put that diffuser on it like that and it'll help flood out the light and give you more of a wall of light output okay so there's that you can see that readily so that that tight spot beam is now diffused and it's more of a wall of light so it doesn't it doesn't throw as far 
but it lights up more of an immediate flood area. Okay, so there's the E2L diffused, and actually Surefire sells some um, special uh, diffuser attachments for the E series, but this is my cheap um, kind of simulation of that. So there's the diffused E2L, and once again, here's the Surefire 6P incandescent. And there's the E2L uh, diffused one more time. Okay, so thanks a lot for taking the time to view this video, and I'll catch you guys later.